the Fifth Estate wanted to do a story about Ashley Smith and uh, uh, her journey through the prison system. Uh, and uh, we knew that there was a preliminary inquiry in um, uh, Ontario uh, where charges had been heard and, uh, and were, it was decided not to proceed. We knew that the video um, from the Ontario institution where she died was played there. Um, and uh, we also knew that there was a trial that took place uh, regarding uh, her um, uh, stay in uh, a facility in Saskatchewan. The trial was in Saskatchewan of a man uh, who was accused of assaulting her uh, while in custody. And the video uh, was played uh, at that trial. So uh, we made an application to uh, get access to this and to copy this material based on a uh, fundamental principle in law, the open court principle, uh, which allows the media to uh, not only view the material while it's uh, being shown in court, but also to copy it and to uh, broadcast it to the public, make it available to those people who are entitled to be in the room but couldn't make it for some reason. Uh, so we brought those applications uh, and um, we met stiff resistance. Um, uh, as uh, will become evident to anyone who sees the material, um, people who are involved in the proceeding clearly would not want themselves and their actions to be scrutinized in the way that uh, the public uh, process uh, would subject them to. Uh, and um, uh, as a result, uh, we can only assume uh, that's why Corrections Canada fought us at every turn. Um, and uh, we uh, were uh, partially successful in Saskatchewan at the outset. Uh, the judge uh, at the trial said that we uh, should have um, access to what was played in open court, but not what was uh, filed in evidence, but was not played in open court. That obviously gave us uh, access to a limited amount of material, but not everything that was that ought to have been, in our view, publicly available. In Ontario, uh, we met stiffer uh, resistance uh, because uh, we were uh, able to uh, apply the principle, uh, but uh, the exhibits had uh, been given since the preliminary inquiry was over. Um, the, the exhibits had been given uh, to the custody of the um, office of the chief coroner, who was going to be looking into the deaths. Uh, into the death, rather. Uh, and um, the coroner's position was that we shouldn't get access to the uh, video until they had finished their process. Uh, our view was that the public was entitled to go to the courtroom uh, to see it. Uh, we should be able to give the public what they could see and what we've already been able to report on uh, uh, in a word-for-word -word fashion. Uh, but we wanted to be able to show it to the public um, as if they were able to be in the room. So we, at first instance, the provincial court judge said that he was uh, persuaded that we had a good open court principle argument, uh, but was concerned that uh, the uh, coroner's uh, process was something that he should defer to. Uh, we appealed that uh, and got uh, a ruling uh, that uh, didn't, uh, didn't assist us in, in getting to um, all of the uh, exhibits that had been filed, uh, and um, so we uh, appealed that to the Ontario Court of Appeal, uh, which finally gave us a, a wonderful ruling uh, that will serve us very well in the future. Uh, we didn't set out on this uh, journey to make a precedent, uh, but uh, we are gratified that uh, uh, we were able to get a, a ruling from a very from the highest court in Ontario uh, that sets out very clear ground rules about how you get access to an exhibit and what the tests are. Well, it means a number of things. Uh, first of all, there can be no um, ambiguity about what test applies. Uh, we now know quite clearly uh, that a test that the Supreme Court of Canada issued in 15 years ago in the Dagenet case uh, applies to our access to exhibits. So that's number one. I note that uh, the uh, Toronto Star uh, recently took the Court of Appeal judgment in hand and tried to uh, get um, open um, access uh, to exhibits uh, recently in a number of courts in, in uh, Ontario uh, and were only partially successful. And the problem is that uh, the policy of the Attorney General of Ontario has to be amended to accord with 15-year-old law 
which is the Dajne Mentak case. Uh, and uh, uh, the presumption, once again, is that the public is entitled to access unless there's an order denying that access. Clearly, the ruling's been brought to the attention of uh, the Attorney General of Ontario. Um, it is the highest court in Ontario, uh, and um, it shouldn't be up to the media or citizens to make expensive, time-consuming applications to get access to justice. Uh, they should be entitled to inspect public exhibits, publicly filed exhibits. Um, and maybe that message is getting through. Uh, we were able, in the Williams case, uh, to um, uh, work with the representatives of the Attorney General of Ontario there uh, in getting really quite full access uh, to the proceedings. We were able to use Blackberries in court to transmit what was being said uh, live. Uh, we were able to uh, ensure that the public who attended had access to uh, all of the exhibits that were filed and could see them. Uh, we were uh, uh, able to uh, get copies and, and uh, broadcast copies of some very important exhibits that were there, including, um, on the Fifth Estate, uh, as you know, the um, uh, confession tape uh, from, uh, that was played in open court uh, uh, from uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, so um, the openness principle is gradually being uh, honored and respected. Uh, we've uh, been establishing precedents now, um, uh, quite um, significant precedents from the Supreme Court of Canada, now the Ontario Court of Appeal uh, in this field, and uh, uh, we're hoping that the message will get through to uh, those who have custody of uh, exhibits uh, that uh, the rule is openness and the exception is um, uh, restrictions. This was a very important uh, victory. It uh, took us, as, as you know, five uh, attempts uh, to get a uh, court, and we have got the uh, Ontario Court of Appeal, the highest court in Ontario, to uh, confirm uh, for us uh, that uh, uh, openness doesn't just apply to um, the uh, ability to come into the courtroom to see what's going on. It applies to the ability to copy exhibits, to broadcast exhibits, and not only the portion of the exhibit that is played in open court, but the entire exhibit that is filed with the court, because that's the, uh, that's the record on which the judge relies to make his ruling. Well, I think you only have to watch uh, the Fifth Estate uh, to see. Uh, you know, video, uh, some people say, well, why is video important? Um, you know, we can, uh, reporters can go into the room, they can tell us what happened, they can, they can write a few words down and we can read them. Um, video, uh, I think, uh, when it's available, um, makes a meaningful discussion of court cases possible. It really does. It, it uh, informs public debate, it creates the debate, it shapes the debate, it focuses the debate, uh, and it, it creates what really is a meaningful public discussion about the court case in question. It, it draws people's attention uh, to uh, court cases in a way that's um, uh, really essential for public discussion. Uh, we probably wouldn't be discussing the Ashley Smith case on the Fifth Estate and in a, as much in the media generally if it wasn't because the Fifth Estate wanted to get access to this video and was able to get it. You know, there are examples uh, in recent memory uh, of the importance of video to public discussion, not just the Ashley Smith case. We all remember the Jukansky video uh, in the Vancouver airport. Um, you know, that was showing a person uh, who died. And we all feel very badly. In fact, uh, CBC, when that video was first made available, uh, was reticent to show it all. Uh, out of deference uh, to uh, all concerned. Uh, but that video was played uh, quite a bit uh, because it was a way of analyzing the case, understanding the case, um, uh, humanizing what happened. Uh, and the video really probably led to the public inquiry uh, that uh, uh, evaluated uh, what happened there. Um, video has a, a, a powerful uh, effect and a, and a very useful public effect. Um, 
And uh, there are other examples. The, uh, I've already referred to the uh, Williams uh, confession tape, uh, which riveted uh, audiences. Um, the police uh, ability to interrogate him is something that uh, would take uh, a book uh, to explain if somebody wanted to sit down and read that book. Uh, but they say a picture is worth a thousand words, uh, and uh, the deft... Uh, uh, the deft interrogation technique by the uh, OPP officer involved was there for people to, to see, appreciate, and understand. Uh, video has um, uh, a real capacity for uh, helping us understand uh, what happens in the court process and uh, reminding us that this, the, the court system is not just about um, uh, uh, resolving dry disputes, it's about solving human problems. Uh, it's a, it's a, a forum where our most difficult issues are, are resolved, and it's a place where uh, society uh, is able uh, to um, see justice and satisfy itself that justice is done. There are natural concerns that people have about uh, whether uh, the video of a person uh, dying uh, in disturbing circumstances, is uh, something that should be shown to the public. Um, the, uh, one of the judges in this case, uh, the judge in Ontario who ruled before the Ontario Court, Court of Appeal overruled him, um, thought that this was something that, was, uh, that he did not feel should be broadcast uh, to the general public. Um, the Court of Appeal overruled him because they said it's not up to a judge uh, to decide uh, on that basis uh, whether the public should get access to what is a public exhibit. There has to be a demonstration of harm uh, to a legally protected interest. But just because we get access to it doesn't mean that we automatically want to broadcast it. Um, we have standards that we apply and we uh, certainly want um, journalistically to present any such material in uh, the most sensitive manner. Um, in this case, our task was um, supported, very importantly, uh, by uh, Ashley Smith's mother, uh, who felt it was important that the public see this. Um, and uh, I think that the, the Fifth Estate uh, program that everyone's able to see uh, will uh, demonstrate uh, that we've treated this subject uh, in as sensitive a manner as, uh, as you can. <laughs>